Joyce Banda is Africa's second woman president. In 2012, she joined Liberia's president, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, following the death of Malawi's president, Binguwa Mutharika. Well, this week, Talk Africa is in the Malawian capital, Lilongwe. We speak to President Banda about her vision for Malawi and the region, following her ascension to the chairmanship of the Southern African Development Community. Born on April 12, 1950 in Malemia Village, Joyce Hilda Banda is the quintessential African woman. She's been through the straight and narrow. An educator and grassroots women's rights activist, Banda joined politics in 1999, winning the Zomba Malosa parliamentary seat on President Bakili Malusi's party ticket. Malusi named her Minister for Gender and Community Services, and in 2004 she was re-elected as a Member of Parliament. Two years later, President Bingu Wamutharika, who came to power in May 2004, appointed her as Foreign Minister. In this role, she established relations with Beijing, saying the switch would bring economic benefits to Malawi. In 2009, she ran as the Democratic Progressive Party's vice presidential candidate, alongside Mutharika, who ran for presidency. With a Bachelor of Arts in Early Childhood Education from Columbus University, Banda would go on to serve as Malawi's first female vice president before becoming the country's first female president following Mutharika's death in April 2012. Banda's the founder and leader of the People's Party, formed in 2011 after she was expelled from the ruling DPP when she refused to endorse Mutharika's younger brother Peter as a successor to the presidency for the 2014 general election. President Joyce Hilda Banda is a highly decorated African female personality, having won various international awards, including an honorary doctorate degree from Jeonju University. Your Excellency, thank you very much for giving us uh, this opportunity. Now, you're the first woman to chair the regional uh, body, SADC. Where are Africa's women? What is the status now of African women in terms of leadership? I think we must admit that uh, Africa has done very well and that some of us who are even in leadership are surprised that uh, our men on the continent of Africa has, have decided to create space for women to participate in leadership side by side and uh, genuinely too. And I say this because I know that there are some parts of this world where they're still struggling, more advanced parts of this world where they're struggling to get a woman into state house. So we've done well. We've done very well, but we also realize the kind of responsibility that we carry as f the first crop of uh, uh, women leaders in state house. All right. Uh, what will be your agenda, though, um, as the chair of SADC now? What will be the agenda of Malawi? I, not Malawi, for, but for the region, I deliberately chose the theme of uh, agricultural development. Um, I believe that uh, the whole region, agriculture is the mainstay, and I believe that uh, we are facing challenges because of climate change and other issues, that uh, the whole region right now, as I sit here, is challenged by food insecurity. And I, and I, and I felt that um, as somebody who has spent all my adult life working with disadvantaged groups of people and the poor, that agriculture would be the main uh, my should be my theme. Uh, I believe that um, time has come for us not only to look at food, f food production, but also to look at agriculture's business, to ensure that our people are taking advantage of the rich soils they have, the, the, the masses of water they have to produce more, to, to better their lives, to diversify not only cash crops, but even their diets and improve their nutrition. You talk of uh, food insecurity as being one of the issues challenging the region though, uh, but Malawi itself was previously um, a food secure country. What is the status of the food security in Malawi? The status of uh, food security in the whole region is not good, including Malawi, because of the, f uh, the rain pattern. So we have discovered that uh, a, a government can have very good policies. For example, in Malawi, the previous president insisted that just like Western countries, Malawians deserved to have subsidized inputs. And that was the secret of the success. And so we were able to produce more than we needed, 
We even gave gifts to our neighbors. We even exported food. But now we've realized that uh, uh, increasingly the rain pattern, climate change is affecting food production in the whole of the Sadiq region. I want to go back to the, the SADC summit and one of the other issues that came out of that was the question of universal testing for HIV and AIDS. Why that line of thinking? What, uh, what uh, it was um, uh, the president of uh, Zambia who brought that up. But I'm, I'm, I'm being told that uh, the World Health Organization, the World Health Organization is also thinking that way. That it is very important that uh, when somebody is tested and found positive, Treatment needs to start there and then to give this person a better chance of a longer life than to wait for this person when that person is so sick that even starting treatment then is not effective. The challenge we face as Africa and in particular as Sadiq is that, um, of the, is that of resources, financial resources. We find that uh, the international resources coming in from the global fund and so on is becoming less and less. While, while the demand grows uh, every day. So w w that discussion you are talking about, you are referring to, we also looked at ways of mobilizing resources nationally in order to meet the challenge of uh, increasing the number of people in treatment. Because the reason why people must start later is because the countries are uh, 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 don't have enough resources to, 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 access, to, to allow uh, as many people as possible access treatment. So uh, uh, universal testing and treatment was a recommendation that came out of that meeting. But countries side by side with that must look at how they ca can also mobilize resources. So there were so many suggestions that came from that meeting. And without preempting what is going to be the final decision, that was a brainstorming a, 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 a meeting. And we have agreed as summit leaders that uh, our ministers of health and our ministers of agriculture must meet as quickly as possible. One, to look at increasing food production in the region, and then so looking at some of the issues I raised earlier. But also the, our health ministers to look at uh, this whole question of how do we uh, mobilize resources, but also how do we approach the whole question of nutrition. Because it's not about just having food, enough food, but it's also having the right food and eating the right food. Uh, that's number one. Number two is that uh, the, the stubborn link between HIV, AIDS, and good nutrition, and as people go on treatment, and then having available uh, and having access to, to better nutrition. So the, the two groups have not met yet, and that's why I'm saying I'd rather uh, be able to comment more when they have met. But that is what we have quickly decided to do. And I'm very excited about this because um, I come in as chair and I brought in the issue of uh, agriculture as my theme. And, and, and I see that we are moving towards doing, focusing on things for the next year that I have uh, worked for all my life. I, and I'm very excited about that process. How challenging, though, does the question of HIV AIDS still remain uh, for the continent all these years later? I, I must say that it's still a big challenge, and that uh, uh, they, sa they say that the Sadiq region is one of those regions that is most, most affected. But I am one person who is o an, a person who is always uh, optimistic. I look at the statistics and I see that we have made a lot of progress. And for me, I take I take joy in recognizing that we haven't gotten worse; we've gotten better. And uh, but the fight is on; is still on. We are st we've still got a long way to go. President Mugabe in that meeting, if you remember, he talked about how we must focus on prevention. And I agree with him. Because while we talk about mobilizing resources and having treatment for our people, we must also focus a lot on, 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 on prevention. And there are two areas that he suggested that I want to pursue vigorously because I've always talked about the same here. That as Africa, we must continue to sensitize our people. But we must also eliminate culture and traditions that just enhance the, the, the spread of AIDS. So, so there's so much for us to do, but there's also so much progress that we have made. 
I want to talk a bit about uh, some of your uh, d domestic issues. And uh, at the beginning of your administration, you took some austerity measures uh, uh, for Malawi. What informed that decision and what's been the reaction to that? Um, I think um, it is. you have to understand where I came from, that uh, I had been vice president for uh, three years and that during that time, I had com been completely sidelined because of the problems I was having with the leadership here. We didn't have uh, foreign forex. So because of not having forex in the country, we didn't have fuel, we didn't have drugs. And uh, our because our companies couldn't import raw materials, they were scaling down. So people were losing jobs. People were going on the street frustrated. And then there was so much intolerance to criticism and to protest and to freedom of association, so much so that uh, people were, uh, uh, 20 people had been killed. At the point that I took over, the president of this country had been given 60 days by the, by the civil society to either call for a referendum, whether, that, whether he should continue as leader or resign. So you, you can imagine that it, it, there was so much anger and there was so much hatred and there was so much pain and there's so much hopelessness. Now, coming in at a time such as that, the, the, the good news is that all Malawians were set to do something about the situation. I say this because I want you to understand that we have registered success, but it would be wrong for me to claim that success alone because it was a decision all Malawians made that we needed to change our situation. So we worked very hard. We, we had, yes, indeed, to put, to put up those... Uh, austerity uh, measures, but it was, a necessi it, was a it was a necessity. I put it in all languages available to make people, even at grassroots, understand why we must go through that painful bit in our history in order to get here. So I could use something like, uh, well, if you have a fever, you go to the hospital, they'll give you an injection, it's painful, but you the, the fever will go down. To make, to make sure that everybody understands. And we stood together and we moved together. And it, I had to set the example myself. That is why I sold, the, I, I, I sold the jet, the presidential jet. It's not a luxury in Malawi to have a presidential jet. It takes me just one hour if I have a private jet to go to Mozambique to have a meeting with my brother there, uh, the president there. I, and it takes me 40 minutes to go into Zimbabwe to have a meeting with President Mugabe. It takes me four days to go to Mozambique if I don't have a private jet. But it is a step I had to take. I had to look at the situation of my fellow Malawians and to say, does it make sense that I have a jet flying around when my fellow Malawians are suffering? And therefore, if I'm going to call upon Malawians to make sacrifices, I must be the first to do it. So that's why we withdrew the extra Mercedes-Benz cars from the ministers. That's why I reduced my own salary by one third. Um, but also, uh, Mal all Malawians had to go through because of uh, the, that had a difficult period because we had to devalue the kwacha. We are and by almost fifty percent because the the, I, uh, the the IMF had been requesting Malawi to to to, to, to devalue the kwacha for three years, and if they had done that in the three years, uh, the situation wouldn't have been as bad. But in my case, I looked at it, and it is a decision Malawians made, and nobody pushed us. And I want this understood, because some people have thought that I was under pressure by the World Bank. It, w it was us Malawians. We sat in Mangochi for two days as Malawians, all stakeholders, and made a decision about how we were going to move forward. And so devaluing the culture was one of those. And two, it was to draw up an economy, economic recovery plan. In within that economic recovery plan, we also chose four sectors that we wanted to focus on in the three, two years that I had. We also had to ensure that uh, there are measures that we shall take in order to ease the pain because of the impact that devaluation was going to have on Malawians. So we had to uh, bring in social programs that uh, mitigated uh, the suffering of the people. So we, we, we brought in uh, public works, school feeding programs, cash, tra cash transfers, uh, and, and, and that is what helped to see us through. We are, we are going to continue even now 
both in urban and rural areas, to make sure that people have work that they can do and earn, live and earn money in order to ease the, suf the suffering as we recover the economy. How, how stable, though, is the economy at the moment? Uh, what's the state of uh, recovery? The recovery, we, 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 we've done very well. Um, our, 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 our kwacha against the dollar went up to 420, uh, depreciated all the way to 420. Uh, and we have now, uh, it, now it has now ap uh, ap appreci appreciated to 300 and between 340, 350. Our interest rates went to 45%. Now our interest rates are 35%. Our, uh, our, 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 um, our inflation rate had gone over 30%. Now it's at 27%. So we, we, we are making progress. I am not satisfied yet. I feel that... Um, um, it's very fragile, we need to be very cautious, and we need to continue to make the sacrifices we must make, particularly at this level, particularly at gov government expenditure. But I believe that we are, head we are on the right track. It is my intention to stay the course. It, I don't even think I have a choice. Uh, I, I know that it is an election year, and sometimes the temptation is high for me to get off track because I need to do certain things in order to, but, uh, but for me, I'm looking at the, the future. My vision is a Malawi where everybody lives a better life. And if for that to happen, it is the sacrifices I make now. Mm -hmm. If that costs me the job, if that costs me the elections, then that's fine. I will go out believing that I was doing the right thing for my people. Talk Africa is in Malawi this week, speaking with President Joyce Banda. We'll take a short break and return in just a moment. Welcome back to the program. Our guest this week is Malawi's president, Dr. Joyce Banda. Malawi, though, still remains highly dependent uh, on donor aid. And, and at some stage, I think Western donors had asked Malawi to win itself of uh, aid dependency. Is Malawi at a position where it can do that? Malawi is at a position where it is quickly trying to recover its economy. But Malawi is very, very clear in its mind that that's the route we must take. I want Malawi to move very quickly from aid to trade. And I know that uh, for that to happen, we must create the environment for investment to grow, for foreign investment to trickle, trickle into Malawi. And so what I've done within this year, I have uh, ensured that we work extremely hard to change some of the laws that uh, were standing in the way of investment create an enabling environment, environment for people to be invest, both from outside and locally. And uh, we were at, uh, I think, uh, uh, number 167 on the World Bank Index as a destination for doing business. Uh, we don't know the results as of now, but definitely I know that we shall make progress. So we m w I'm very, very clear in my mind. But secondly, I, I, I want you to know that we've just discovered that we are very rich. I did we didn't know before. So we have huge deposits of, of minerals, oil, gas in the country. What is the scale of that? A geomapping exercise is underway, supported by the World Bank, to quantify what is it that we have. I mean, how much do we have? But uh, definitely they have found that we have rubies, we have gold, we have rare earth, uh, huge deposits of rare earth. We have coal. The belt from Tet runs into Malawi. So we have coal as well. But what I am saying is that we are fortunate that we find ourselves at a position like this, where we are not so rich, but we are so rich. We have all this underneath, but we can also draw lessons from those countries that got rich before us, that uh, may have made mistakes. Mining has a lifespan, and I must ensure that Malawians must benefit fully from the resources that we have. 20 years later, when the resources are gone, they must look back and say, yes, we were there, we had, and this is how we benefited. 
And the, so therefore we must move cautiously without just getting excited. We must have a proper mining code. We must have a proper exercise done. We must know who is getting what and how much of that remains here in Malawi. So that's where we are going. So while we are, we, we are aware that we must win ourselves from donor aid, we must not also be careless about uh, how we use what we have. Because I know quantifying and making use properly of what we have can enable us to win ourselves, even not completely, but a, a long way in getting away f from the, that dependence on aid that you talk about. Uh, how long, though, before uh, Malawi knows exactly what it has? No, 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 no. it's just a few months. B the exercise is ongoing no right now. Fortunately, we have a lot of countries that, have dis ha that are helping us to, do, to, to carry out the, this exercise and to draw up the mining code. All right. You were recently, though, in China. W what specific areas of cooperation are you seeking from China? China has been a very good friend of ours. And uh, I want you to know that I feel extremely proud about this relationship because it's not an old relationship. I mean, we, did, we were not friends. We didn't have diplomatic relations with, uh, uh, with China before now. But I was foreign minister when that changed. And I am one that championed that move. And I'm the one who signed the agreement. And I am the one who opened their embassy here. But uh, China has given us a lot of support in the time that we've been together. And China, for me, for Malawi, China has been a very good friend. So we, um, they ha are helping us in infrastructure development and the uh, energy generation. But the, uh, for us to grow our economy, or this oil mining I'm talking about, we have to increase our energy generation. And uh, so China is helping us in, in, those, in those areas. What, what would you say, though, to Chinese? I mean, you, you talk about uh, Malawi now entering into a phase of, of wealth. What would you say to, for instance, potential Chinese investors? Yeah, uh, the, the time is now. There is potential. In fact, there are a lot of Chinese ca companies that have already shown interest in, uh, in, in, uh, in, our, mine, in, uh, in our minerals. Uh, for example, there's, a, I think, a Chinese company that is interested in mining titanium in Mangochi, and um, so th th there's a lot of development there. And, uh, and, and I believe that truly there's potential for us to uh, increase our cooperation in, in mining, in, explo in, 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 in exploiting our mineral resources. Y your relationship, though, with China, as, y as you mentioned, is, is still quite new, but uh, Malawi in the past has been quite pro-Western. What is the status of your bilateral relations, though, with Western countries? Yeah, the, 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 the Western relationship I, I, is very good. And uh, I have never been at a po point where I thought there was, there was China against the West or the West against China. I have said it on BBC and I'm saying it again on CCTV that uh, we will go to, 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 to Western countries and have a relationship with them. Some of them are traditional relations. For example, us and Britain. They they we, we were a British colony. So that relationship is ongoing and is, is, is an old relationship. But we also have a relationship with China. And it is my sincere hope that uh, the West will never come to a point where they will say African countries cannot have a relationship with China. Well, that wouldn't be fair. So we, we have a relationship with China, and China will have its own terms, how, how they want to uh, support Africa. And we shall go by those terms, and we shall respect those terms. The West shall have their terms, and we shall respect those terms. But I think it would be wrong for for any for for the, for the West to stop us from having a relationship with China. That's that, that's not fair. All right. I, I just want to get um, a feel as well uh, on your foreign policy around the region, though. And there has been um, a running dispute with Tanzania um, over the status of uh, Lake Lake Malawi. What is the status of your relationship uh, with Tanzania. H has that uh, disagreement, though, hampered any relations with Tanzania? No, we, uh, uh, you were here and you saw me holding hands with my brother, President Kikwete. Um, I truly believe that uh, this is a, a dispute that is totally unnecessary and that uh, can easily be resolved. Uh, because uh, I don't know if you know this, but we are so close that uh, we, are o we are all related. In fact, our paramount chief, who is in the last district, his grandfather is buried on the other side 
of we, which is in Tanzania. So it is uh, incumbent upon us as leaders that uh, we must ensure that this is uh, resolved as quickly as possible. In fact, for your information, the reason why I can't say more on this is because it is in the able hands of uh, the retired President's Forum. Uh, they are the ones who have been requested to mediate. And, uh, and, uh, and I don't know when that is completed, but uh, it's going on well. All right. This year now marks the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King. What's been the progress of Africa's women over the last 50 years? Well, uh, I don't think that uh, the person who said that uh, Africa is the, the continent of the 21st century made a mistake. I think we are making a lot of progress. And you can just see from the countries on this continent that are growing fast economically to see that Africa was a sleeping giant and that uh, we are definitely going to grow faster than anybody ever imagined. The good news is that Africa too has realized that in order for us to make that kind of progress, it will take both men and women. Uh, it doesn't make sense that half of a whole human resource capacity is left behind. And, uh, and I just thank God that uh, our African men have realized that in order for us to make progress and succeed, we will need to move side by side. I have been president, I've been, I have been minister of gender, I've been foreign minister, I have been vice president, and I've been president now for two years. I don't remember any single day when I, sat, I, I noticed anything negative from my brothers as I work with them, both here in Malawi and in the whole continent of Africa. And I felt very, very proud indeed uh, two days ago when uh, our, um, our new sec uh, executive secretary of SADC took her oath. I was standing there with the, uh, the first female chair of the African Union, Dr. Kosaza Nazuma, who also I had the privilege of serving together with as foreign ministers of our, of our nations. And I was standing there as the first female president side by side with her, watching our first female executive secretary of SADC take her oath. But she was being sworn in by the, f by the first female chief justice of Malawi. So we've done well. And I, n I know that with that in mind, getting our women on board and our youth on board, the, my cabinet right now is 45% youth, young people if all of us can move together and be all inclusive, but also pay special attention to our poor on the continent, because uh, my level may be just 20% across the continent. If we are not all inclusive and get the rest on board and have special programs, we shall fail. But, I, but with where our mind is right now, where everybody is very conscious about how important it is to get everybody on board, this continent is going to go places. I noticed though that um, I I in the lineup for probably next year's uh, Malawi's election, you are the only woman uh, running. What are your chances though as a woman? I'm going to win. There's no question about that. The majority of when we went for elections 2009, the constitution is can in this country calls for uh, both the president, presidential candidate and running mate to be elected together. So you are on the your name is on the ballot paper of your president. So I was elected vice president. And uh, when that happened, when Malawian women saw that uh, a, a female f vice president, presidential candidate was on the ticket for the first time, if you go to electoral commission now, 70% of that voted during the last elections were rural women. And the rural women are still here. And they will ensure that they don't lose their position. All right, Your Excellency. Thank you very much.